Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa Siegel. I'm a professor of migration studies, and this is a channel about all things migration. Today, in honor of the Olympic Games, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about some prominent migrant Olympians. These are, of course, people who were maybe not born in the country that they were representing, or perhaps they have moved to another country than the current country that they are representing in the Olympics. And I'm gonna be focusing here, of course, on the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. So I'm gonna start off very quickly by doing a quick review of who a migrant is, and then I'm gonna talk about some specific athletes uh, from Japan, the United States, and Great Britain. So of course, Japan is the current host of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, and the United States and Great Britain were the top medal contenders in the previous Summer Olympics. That's why we're zooming in on them. So first, let's talk about who a migrant is. According to the International Organization for Migration, a migrant is really an umbrella term not defined under international law. It's reflecting a common sort of lay understanding of a person who moves away from his or her place of usual residence, whether within a country or across an international border, temporarily or permanently, and for a variety of reasons. The term really does include a number of well-defined legal categories of people, such as migrant workers, persons whose particular types of movements are legally defined, such as maybe smuggled migrants, as well as those who, whose status or meaning of movement are not specifically defined under international law, such as international students. The important point here is we're looking at international migrants for the purpose of this video, not internal migrants or migrants within the same country. So here we're really looking at people who have changed their place of residency from one country to another country, sometimes also gaining a new citizenship, but it doesn't have to be the case. If you're interested more in who a migrant is and going into a little bit more detail on that, you can check out my video on that here. I'll also make sure to put that in the, the link in the description below. So now let's start off with our host of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, Japan. It has actually previously been known as a very homogenous country and society. It's not known for its diversity, but this is really starting to change. And with its new crop of athletes, you can also see how this is slowly changing in Japan. So at least 35 members of the Japanese team, which consists of more than 500 people, are actually multicultural. They are con they're specifically considered medal contenders in tennis and judo, and will also compete in boxing, sailing, uh, sprinting, rugby, fencing, and other sports. So we are starting to see this changing already in a Japanese context, with more diversity even showing up in the national team. So let's kick off with a very well-known person, Naomi Osaka. She is a tennis champion whose father is actually Haitian American and whose mother is Japanese. As a three-year-old, Naomi and her family moved from Osaka, Japan to New York and then finally settled in Florida. Naomi and her sister began practicing tennis with their father at, by day and they were homeschooled at night and she made her professional tennis debut on her 14th birthday in October of 2011. She now actually currently lives in Los Angeles in the United States. She's won four Grand Slam titles. She's transformed the international conversation also around racial injustice and mental health and has become the highest paid female athlete in the world. In 2019, she actually gave up her US passport or her US citizenship in order to comply with Japanese law, which does not which does not allow dual citizenship. Until that time, she was allowed to have dual citizenship, but once she turned a certain age, she had to choose between the citizenships and she chose for the Japanese citizenship. This move was required in order for her to retain eligibility to compete for Japan also in the Olympics, which she is currently doing. Naomi already shows someone who has had a lot of migration experience and mobility over time, being born in Japan, moving to the United States, moving internally several times also within the United States, and still competing for the Japanese national team. So another interesting person, it, another interesting Japanese person is Rui Hashimura. So he has a Japanese mother and a father from Benin. 
He was born in Japan, but he actually moved to the United States to play basketball, both at the, at the college level and now in the NBA. He currently plays for the Washington Wizards. However, he still plays for the Japanese national team. So he's currently living in the United States, an immigrant in the United States, but plays for the Japanese national team. Now let's turn to the United States, which topped the medal table at Rio in 2016. Let's start with Faluke Gunderson. In this year's USA team, she is competing in volleyball. She was actually born in London, Ontario, Canada to Nigerian parents and holds tri-citizenship with um, Canada, Nigeria, and the United States, but will be representing the United States at the Olympic Games. She also attended high school in Florida and went to university in Stanford um, where her volleyball career really took off. She currently plays as a middle blocker for a, Jap a Japanese club, so she's also an immigrant in Japan. And she previously won a bronze medal as a member of the women's volleyball team in Rio in 2016. So she's someone who has had plenty of migration experience. Her parents already came from Nigeria. She was born in Canada. She lived for quite some time in the United States and then also in Japan. Now we can turn to the world of horseback riding and look at Stefan Peters, who is competing in dressage. He was born in Wesel, Germany, and came to the United States in 1984 to work as a trainer in San Diego. He found that Southern California was a good fit for him, and he made his decision to stay and become a U.S. citizen in 1992. He's been one of the country's top international dressage competitors ever since, having represented the United States at four Olympic Games, at four FEI World Equestrian Games, and two Pan American Games. And finally, let's look at the world of competitive fencing. And here we can see Dagmara Wozniak, who was originally born in Warsaw, Poland, um, but moved to the United States when she was one and grew up for most of her life in New Jersey. She's a two-time Olympian already, winning the Olympic bronze in 2016, and she is currently now training, of course, and attending uh, Tokyo 2020 in her third Olympics. Now let's turn to Team GB as it's known, or the British National and Olympic Team. A notable mention for the British team is that more than one third of Britain's London 2012 Olympic Team winners, not even contenders, but winners, were born abroad or had foreign parents or grandparents. So that really shows the diversity of the British team. So someone who's not competing in this year's Olympic Games, but has competed in two previous Olympic Games in London, London 2012 and in Rio 2016, and is one of the most famous immigrant athletes is Sir Mohammed or Mo Farah. Um, he was born in Mogadishu, Somalia. Because of the violent conflict in, so in Somalia, it drove his family from their homes in Mogadishu in 1990. They fled to live in Djibouti first, and when he was eight, they actually moved to London to live with his father who had already made it to the UK. When he arrived in the UK, he spoke very little English, but he grew up in West London and began running at school when he was spotted by his PE teacher who saw his, poten his potential as a young student. His running career took off and he was supported in his early career by a number of, of major figures, including the women's marathoner Paula Radcliffe, who paid for his driving lessons, and the philanthropist Sir Eddie Kukundis, um, who covered his legal fees for his naturalization as a British citizen. He has been extremely successful and won gold medals in both the 5,000 meter and 10,000 meter races um, in uh, the London Olympics and in the Rio de Janeiro Olympics. Another notable runner in the Olympics coming from a migration background is Katarina Johnson Thompson. She will compete in the heptathlon. She was actually born in Liverpool, England, so she herself is not a migrant, but her parents were international migrants. Her dad, Ricardo, is from Nassau, which is the capital of the Bahamas, and her mom, Tracy, is from the UK. So she actually has 
um, an originally British mother and an immigrant father. She spent her early years on the island actually in the Bahamas before moving back to Liverpool, which is the town that she actually grew up in and, and definitely proudly calls her home today. After her Olympic debut in London 2012, she made the decision to move to Montpellier, France to join a group under the guidance of the multi-event specialist coach Bertrand Velkin. So she already comes from a migrant background, having uh, also spent time in the Bahamas, having a father from the Bahamas, but she herself is also an international migrant, having moved to France for her career and to train. There are a number of other athletes like this, both in Japan, the United States, and the UK. This is just an example of a few. You will find athletes just like this across a, no a number of other countries around the world. Immigrants are really making important strides at representing their countries in the Olympics and shows also how important diversity can be for countries and also helping in their conquest of sport. If you like this video, please make sure to like, comment down below, subscribe to this channel, and make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos that I upload every week. If you're also interested in other videos on the Olympics, you can check out my video on uh, the Olympic Committee refugee team, which is a very interesting team that is made up specifically of refugees. You can check that out here. I'll also make sure to link it in the description below. Please do join me for the rest of my videos on this channel. I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.